Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is another Instant Pot video. I told y'all that this month I'm gonna be bringing you some Instant Pot recipes. So we've got another week and we have three delicious Instant Pot recipes. One of them is my own and then two of them is actually something that I made for the first time. I made a whole chicken for the first time in the Instant Pot, turned out amazing. And then I made a pork loin for the first time in the Instant Pot instant pot and y'all it turned out amazing as well so i was so excited to share these with you guys um i know instant pots can be very intimidating um i was intimidated for years i actually talk about it um later in the video i was so intimidated for years of an instant pot but youtube 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 helped me grow past that and because of all the lovely ladies here on YouTube that share their Instant Pot recipes, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do it. So I did it and now I love it. And now I'm sharing my recipes and my favorite recipes that I find with you guys. So go out there, buy you an Instant Pot. Don't be scared. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below, email me. Um, and if I don't know them, I will try to find somebody that does. So. Let's go ahead and get started in this Instant Pot recipe video. I have got three recipes, like I said, and I hope y'all enjoy. So for the first Instant Pot recipe, we are going to be making a pork loin. This was super simple, and this is actually my first time ever making a pork loin in the Instant Pot before, so I was kind of hesitant, but it turned out really good. It was so moist, um, nice and juicy, and delicious. So I actually had thawed this pork loin out to have as a dinner, but we ended up not needing it for a dinner, and so I made it to freeze. So we actually ended up eating half of one of those, and then the other one just went straight into the freezer. So what I've done is I have just cut that pork loin in half, and then I have seasoned it really well with that SPG. Of course, y'all can use any seasoning that you want. I just totally feel like the heavier of the seasoning, the better, because it's gonna soak in um, and add your flavor. So you're just gonna take and sear all sides on your pork loin. I just have it on the saute function with some oil, olive oil in there. And I'm just going to sear all the sides nice and good, lock in that first layer of seasoning there. And then once you do that, you're just gonna take those out of the Instant Pot, and then you're going to deglaze your pan. The saute function is still on at this point. So I just took a good splash, probably about a fourth of a cup of that white cooking wine, and I'm just making sure I get all those yummy bits up that has stuck to the bottom, because that is all good flavor. So once you do that, then you're going to take and do your second coat of seasoning. Um, and like I said, seasonings are totally up to you. I will have all the links to the seasonings that we used down below. Um, that Killer Hogs one is, a, is amazing. Um, and so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one onion and I'm going to cut it up into rings. And then I'm just gonna place that in the bottom of my Instant Pot. That's gonna be kind of like your bed. Um, you could use your trivet if you didn't wanna do the onion, but I felt like it, it gave it some really good flavor. And then you're going to add in one cup of chicken broth. You always wanna have at least a cup of liquid whenever you are pressure cooking because you need enough liquid in there where it will come to pressure. And I have learned that if you use hot liquids when you are um, adding liquids to your instant pot then it will it won't take as long to come to pressure now where i already had this on saute it's already nice and warm and everything but if you're adding liquids in just regularly then definitely just add them in hot and then that way it won't take near as long so i cooked this for 35 minutes on high pressure and then i let it do a full natural release which it was about i think like 30 minutes um, I let it go a little bit extra because I got busy but I think it was about 30 32 minutes for it to do a full natural release you could definitely take those juices 
and make a gravy out of it um, and it would be so good but this was really delicious i feel like it turned out good for it to be in the instant pot and you still kind of got that um, like barbecuey flavor and i still wanted mine to be sliceable so um, about 165 to 170 is perfect for it to slice and y'all this was so delicious like I said, we ate one of them and then I had the other one put in the freezer for later. Okay y'all, so we are going to make chicken bacon ranch pasta in the Instant Pot today. I have got my Instant Pot on saute function and I've just got a couple tablespoons of butter in here And we're just gonna let that melt down. And then I have cut up about five or six boneless, skinless chicken thighs. I have cut those up here. So we're just gonna kind of saute them a little bit in there just to give them a little bit of color. And I'm going to be seasoning it with this SPG. This is always linked down below. Then once you get a good sear on all of your meat, you're going to add in one packet of dry ranch. Four cups of chicken broth, and I just always do water with the bouillon powder. And then one 16 ounce box, box of rigatoni, or you can do panay or ziti, any kind you have on hand. one cup of heavy cream or evaporated milk. And then you're just going to top it with your eight ounce block of cream cheese and then set it for pressure cook. And like always, make sure that it is on the ceiling, make sure your ring is in right, and then you're just going to pressure cook this for five minutes, letting it do a quick release. Okay, so the one time that I don't put the uh, steamer vent on there, it goes absolutely everywhere all over my cabinets <sighs> all over the toy all over the floor yeah thought i'd show y'all some real life here yay so you know that's the first time it has ever done that it's never done that before but i thought i'd still share the realness So let's get this mixed together. 
so then you're just going to give everything a good mix if there's any noodles stuck to the bottom make sure you get those up for this recipe i didn't have any problem with the noodle sticking it was absolutely perfect and then putting that cream cheese there at the top it's just going to melt right in and then you're just going to add in about a half a cup to a cup of bacon bits and then i ended up adding a that whole bag of cheese i went back you'll see in a second i went back and added the rest of the bag of cheese and it was perfect i was worried that it was going to be too runny because as you see it looks pretty runny but y'all it thickened up it got i'd say i put the lid on it and gave it about 10 minutes for the rest of everything else to get done and it was perfect this was delicious luke said this was a new family favorite and i will have this recipe linked down below for you guys it is a must try So here is a clip of leftovers y'all we all ate huge portions and this made so much this is definitely like an eight to ten serving meal super delicious oh, it is so good y'all y'all have to try this recipe so the last instant pot recipe on this video is a whole chicken this is something else that I had tried for the first time and y'all it turned out perfect. <laughs> it's crazy to think that I used to be so intimidated by the Instant Pot and now I absolutely love it. Um, so first I've just got my whole chicken there and it is completely thawed. I took all the insides out and all that nasty stuff. And then I'm just going to pat it dry. Pat it completely dry. You want a nice dry chicken. And then I'm going to take and turn on the saute function get some oil in there get it nice and hot because you're going to take and you're going to do a good sear on all the sides of the chicken now i'm using the same seasonings y'all know how much we love the suckle busters it gave this chicken some amazing flavor but definitely season with your heart use what you like your family loves um, but these links are down below so i'm going in with the spg first giving it a good wipe down and then we're going to do that first sear with just the spg on it once we get a good sear on it we will take it out and we will give it another rub down Once the chicken is all seared, you're just going to take it out and then you're going to deglaze your pan again. 
I just used one cup of chicken broth and you just want to get up all those little bits that were stuck down on the bottom. You want all that flavor. It is super good. So that was one cup of chicken broth and then you're going to add in a fourth of a cup of red wine vinegar. I was kind of weird about putting this in here, but I felt like the vinegar would be really good for the chicken and it was, it made it so tender and literally all the bones just fell off of it. It was so tender. <laughs> so I did that and then you're going to do a second rub down of the meat um, and then I chose Suckle Busters, um, the clucker dust. That link is down below as well. Um, but like I said, season with your heart here for the pork and the chicken. Use what you know your family is going to like. We just really enjoy the Suckle Buster seasonings. Um, but you could use like the Kinder has really good seasonings. Um, they're at Walmart in the season in the spice section. Or you could even do um, like the Mont Montreal steak seasoning for this. Um, I just feel like doing the two... The two batches of seasoning is really good on your bigger hunks of meat um, because when you have the lid on it and then there's a lot of moisture in your pressure cooker, um, a lot of that flavor kind of gets like taken off because of the moisture. Um, but the flavor held up so good on this chicken. It was delicious, y'all. So once you give your chicken that nice final rub down, you are going to put your trivet in there and you're going to place your chicken on top of that trivet. Make sure it is nice and flat and kind of even if it's, uh, if the size of your chicken allows it to be. Um, and then I didn't want to waste any of that seasoning. And so I just scraped what was on the platter and patted it on top. And then of course you just want to make sure that it is on sealing make sure your ring is in good and then we are going to pressure cook this on high pressure for 25 minutes and then we are going to let it do a full natural release now the stuff that i had learned online it said to make sure after you do your natural release that you serve it immediately um and so because that's going to help you know keep your chicken moist but you want to make sure to sit it out on the side and kind of let it sit for about 10 minutes before you start cutting it so it kind of holds in all those juices So here he is when he is all cooked and ready to go. It was so good. The dark meat was amazing. I'm more of a dark meat person when it comes to like whole chickens like this. That's how I am with my turkeys as well. You just get so much flavor from that dark meat. Um, but I just like to completely carve it off of the bone there. And of course you can save the bone, freeze it. And once you get a bunch, you can make a big stock pot of chicken broth but there it is it is so good and y'all the leg bones itself just came like right off it it you didn't have a bone to hold on to for the chicken legs it just came right off the bone it was so tender and so juicy and here is my plate i just served it up with some homemade mashed potatoes and some canned carrots y'all that dinner was so good i hope you guys enjoyed these three instant pot recipes if you have any questions let me know in the comment down below but i will see y'all in the next one bye guys <music>